My parents just ruined my credit score, and I'm going to explain exactly how I ended up owing a staggering $250,000. I'm 23 years old, fresh out of college, and I've been dealing with a problem that has been slowly building up over the years. My parents have always shown a clear preference for my twin sister, Julie, and it's something I've struggled with for a long time. After high school, I was excited about studying law. I had high hopes of securing a scholarship to help cover the costs. But my parents weren't as optimistic. They insisted that I apply for an education loan to secure my spot at college as soon as possible. Since I was still under 17 at the time, I had little understanding of how loans worked. I trusted my parents' judgment and agreed to take out the loan, believing they had my best interests at heart. Most of the loan paperwork was handled by my parents. They took care of everything, and I simply signed wherever they asked me to, not fully understanding what I was committing to. Then, the scholarship results came in. I was thrilled to find out that I had received a partial scholarship. This meant that half of my college fees would be covered. Naturally, I asked my parents what they planned to do about the remaining fees, given that the loan seemed larger than necessary. They assured me that I didn't need to worry about it, they would handle everything. Thanks to the scholarship, my tuition fees were reduced by half, and I was able to secure affordable on-campus housing that included meals at a subsidized rate. I also received a quarterly stipend from other sources, which helped cover my living expenses. To make ends meet, I took up a part-time job at a local cafe, which allowed me to stay financially afloat. With all of these factors combined, the loan only needed to cover half of my tuition fees. Five years went by, and the loan issue never came up in any family discussions. My parents were more focused on convincing Julie to pursue a respectable career, like law or something similar. However, she decided to try her luck in the modeling industry and didn't attend college. After graduating, I started working as an intern at a law firm. Everything seemed to be falling into place until I received a shocking notice from the bank. They were demanding repayment of my loan, a whopping $250,000. I was completely blindsided by the amount. My entire tuition for all eight semesters amounted to no more than $125,000, including interest. Yet here I was, being asked to pay double that amount. I was in disbelief. Even if I accounted for every penny my parents might have invested in me, the numbers just didn't add up. It was at this moment that I realized something had gone terribly wrong. My trust in my parents had led me into a financial nightmare that was now threatening my future. When I was moving into my college dorm, I was confident that the total amount of my expenses wouldn't exceed $140,000. However, when I received a notice from the bank about the $250,000 loan, I was shocked and immediately called my parents to get some clarity. They explained that the full college fee was $250,000, so they applied for that amount just in case my scholarship didn't come through. This explanation didn't sit right with me. I reminded them that I had received a half scholarship, plus I had subsidized food and accommodation, so why did they borrow the entire amount from the bank? Their response was vague and full of excuses, which only made me more suspicious. Realizing this wasn't something I could resolve over the phone, I decided to visit them the following weekend. When I arrived, my parents were clearly uncomfortable and tried to avoid the conversation. But I was persistent. I demanded a full account of where all that money had gone. After much back and forth, they finally admitted that they had given the remaining amount to my sister, Julie, to support her education. I was furious. I couldn't believe they had used my loan money for her, especially when they knew how hard I had worked to secure that scholarship. I confronted them, accusing them of always favoring Julie and saying that their constant pampering had not only hurt her but also put me in this terrible financial situation. At this point, my mother became defensive. She insisted that they had always cared for both of us equally and that it was never their intention to give away my loan money. But since I got a partial scholarship, they decided to give the leftover amount to Julie. I shot back, asking why they didn't take out a separate loan for her. They explained that Julie's high school grades weren't good enough to qualify for a loan on her own, and they didn't have any other assets besides the house, which was already mortgaged for my loan. I was beyond frustrated. I told them that I wouldn't pay a cent more than $140,000 and that either Julie or they would have to cover the remaining balance. After that heated argument, I stormed out, 
too angry to continue the conversation. The next morning, I was trying to relax in my room when my father knocked on my door. He said he wanted to have an adult conversation with me, but it was, unsurprisingly, about the loan again. He explained that as a father he felt it was his responsibility to secure the future for both of his children, and that's why he did what he did. I asked him how he could justify giving such a large amount of money to Julie when she didn't even attend college. He admitted that he had tried to persuade her to join, but she was determined to pursue a modeling career instead. I couldn't help but sarcastically ask if she had managed to achieve any success in those five years. My father sighed and said no, but he didn't feel he could stop her from trying. At that moment, I realized just how deeply my parents' favoritism for Julie had affected our lives. Their choices had not only put me in a financial bind but had also done little to actually help Julie in the long run. I felt a pang of guilt for the harsh words I had used, but I couldn't help it. The thought of being saddled with a $250,000 debt was overwhelming. I told my father that the amount was simply too much for me to handle. He tried to reassure me, saying that I was earning a decent stipend from my current job, and once I transitioned to full-time work, I would be making enough money to repay the loan without too much difficulty. I pushed back, trying to explain that it still felt unfair, but he cut me off. He reminded me that I was only 23 years old and had six years to pay off the loan. He pointed out that I was already earning an income, whereas Julie wasn't. Her career was still uncertain, so it didn't make sense to expect her to contribute to repaying the loan. He then launched into a lecture about how a man is supposed to be selfless, and that I needed to learn this lesson if I wanted to be a good husband and father in the future. I wasn't convinced by his reasoning, but I decided to let him talk, rolling my eyes as I listened. The truth is, I'm really struggling with the idea of paying $100,000 on my sister's behalf. Is this really my responsibility? Or is it just being dumped on me because I'm earning and she isn't? I'm genuinely confused. I've spoken to a few friends, and their opinions are mixed. Some think I should pay the loan, while others, including my girlfriend who was also my college classmate, believe that I shouldn't be responsible for the entire amount. They feel that my sister should at least contribute something. That's why I'm here, hoping to get a neutral opinion from strangers. I think I've covered all the relevant details. But if there's anything I've missed, please let me know in the comments and I'll update the information. Update 1. Hey everyone, I've received a lot of comments pointing out that it's not possible to transfer an education loan to someone else. You're absolutely right an education loan is typically dispersed directly to the college, but a portion of it is also sent to the account holder for other expenses like food, accommodation, and books. As I mentioned earlier, my university provided these amenities at a subsidized rate, and I covered the rest with my part-time job. However, my parents took advantage of the situation. They withdrew the remaining $100,000 from my personal account and transferred it to my sister. Yes, they had access to my account because I was only 17 at the time and didn't really understand how banking systems worked. Looking back, I'm not sure if I was just naive or simply ignorant about these things, but this is the reality of what happened. I hope this additional information helps clarify the situation. I found out about some of the policies by doing online research and asking my parents directly. The more I learned, the more shocked I became at how they managed to withdraw the money. They claimed the money was used to cover my expenses, but the truth is, those expenses never added up to $100,000. So how did they manage to take out that much? The answer was startling they created a fake bill. Yes, you read that right. They admitted to fabricating a bill because, according to them, they had no other choice. But the reality is, they did have a choice one that didn't involve withdrawing the money. During our conversation, I walked out on them several times, overwhelmed by the situation. But I quickly realized that storming out wasn't going to solve anything. The loan was in my name, and if I defaulted, it would destroy my credit score not theirs. If worse came to worst, I'd be the one facing legal consequences, not them. So I took a deep breath, calmed down, and told them that if Julie couldn't pay back the loan, then they would have to pay the $100,000 on her behalf. It was that simple. My mother, however, became dramatic. She started saying that as their only son, it was my responsibility to take care of them and my sister. She even compared me to my cousins, who had bought houses and cars for their parents, implying that I was doing nothing for them. 
It was clear that my parents were extremely protective of Julie. They kept her completely out of these discussions, insisting that I shouldn't talk to her about it because she would be too stressed. Really? They said she was already upset because her career wasn't going well, and adding this burden would be too much for her to handle. I wasn't buying it. I pulled up her social media page, showing them that she didn't look stressed at all. In fact, she was busy posting pictures of birthday parties and outings with friends almost every other day. My parents claimed she had to put on a brave face because she was aiming to be a public figure. I couldn't believe how delusional they were. Enough was enough. I decided to confront Julie directly about the money. I was tired of everyone treating her like some fragile little princess. That night, I stayed up late, knowing she usually got home after midnight. By the time she arrived, my parents were already asleep, so I took the opportunity. I sat in the kitchen with a bowl of ice cream, waiting for her. When I heard her car pull into the driveway, I casually offered her some ice cream as she walked in. I started with some small talk chatting about life, cousins, and neighbors. I even threw in some gossip about one of her old school friends to make her feel at ease. She's my sister, after all, and even though the situation was tense, I wanted her to feel comfortable before diving into the serious conversation we needed to have. I was never really close to my sister, and I think it was mostly because of how our parents always seemed to favor her. I know it sounds harsh, but I kind of resented her for it. So when we finally had a conversation, I was determined to keep things civil, even though I was feeling pretty frustrated inside. During our talk, I casually asked her about her career. Honestly, I didn't get even a hint that she was upset or depressed about how things were going. I asked if she had taken any courses or learned any skills related to her goals. She just said no. So I asked her what she did with the money our parents gave her. At first, she looked confused and asked, What money? I clarified that I meant the $100,000 from the student loan. Do you know what she did with that money? No, she didn't use it for anything productive like a cosmetic surgery or a lip job or something. That might have at least been a better use of the money, believe it or not. Instead, she blew it all on partying and vacations with her friends. Up until that point, I was trying really hard to stay calm, but when she told me that, I just lost it. I couldn't believe that she had wasted such a huge amount on nothing but parties. I yelled at her, completely shocked that she could be so careless. She fired back, saying it was none of my business. But of course, it was my business I was the one being asked to pay back the money she had blown with her friends. Our argument got so heated that it woke up our parents. They rushed in, trying to break it up, and immediately started blaming me for bringing up money issues with her. I was furious and asked them why I shouldn't, especially since she was the one who wasted all that money and didn't even feel bad about it. Normally, I would have just backed down, but this time, I stood my ground. I asked my parents if they knew what she had done with the money. They tried to calm me down, saying we should talk about it in the morning, but I wasn't having it. I told them I needed answers right then and there. I made it clear to my sister that I wasn't going to pay back the money she spent. I would only pay for my own tuition fees. She challenged me, saying I could do whatever I wanted, but she wouldn't pay a single penny. She smugly reminded me that the loan was in my name, so legally, she wasn't responsible. She was right to a certain extent, and that made me feel even more defeated. I couldn't stand being around them any longer. I told my parents that either she or they would have to pay the money, and then I stormed out of the house. I ended up crashing at a friend's place for the night. The next morning, I went back to my dorm without speaking to anyone. Fortunately, through my first post, I was able to connect with a bank official who helped me understand more about the loan policies. After the confrontation with my sister and parents, I spoke with him and learned that I could actually take legal action against my parents for faking the bill and taking the loan money. But before I decided to go down that path, I knew I had to think things through carefully. I had to gather all the original bills, and it wasn't easy. Most of them were lost when I moved from my college dorm to my condo after graduation. It took me several days of digging through old emails and apps to finally collect all the soft copies of the bills. After I left home that morning in a fit of anger, my parents didn't even bother to call or check up on me. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't have cared, but I had stormed out in a rage, and they still ignored me. I wasn't eager to talk to them either, so I decided to do what they least wanted confront their precious daughter, Julie. 
I sent her excerpts from the law that detailed the penalties for loan forgery in our jurisdiction. I made it clear that if they didn't pay back the $40,000 plus the $60,000, totaling $100,000, I would sue them for fraud. I also mentioned that I had all the original bills and wasn't afraid to take this to court, even though they were my parents. Julie didn't respond, but a few moments later, I got a call from my dad. I didn't answer and instead left a voice note, saying that they were the greedy ones for expecting me to shoulder this burden. And really, calling Julie my younger sister? She's only five minutes younger than me, for goodness sake. I might have considered paying if she had used the money wisely or shown any guilt for wasting it. But no, she was proud of blowing it all, and my parents seemed to think they had a right to my earnings just because I had a job. I forwarded the same message I sent to Julie to my dad. He didn't respond, but my mom did. She labeled me as greedy, stubborn, and self-centered. I told her I didn't care what they called me, but they needed to pay back the money regardless. After a lot of back and forth and constant follow-ups, my dad finally said he needed some time to review his assets and would get back to me. It's been a week, and I haven't heard from either of them since. I know I might have gone a bit too far by threatening to sue them, but what other choice did I have? It's not like I can't pay the money back, but why should I bear the unnecessary burden for something that was used so carelessly? I'll keep you updated on how things progress, but for now, thank you for guiding me. Update 2. As I mentioned in my previous post, I almost threatened my parents with a lawsuit if they didn't pay back the $100,000 they gave to Julie, especially after they forged my bills to get the amount. After several heated arguments and plenty of badmouthing, my father asked for some time to review his assets and figure out a solution. It's been more than a month since then, and I'm still waiting for a response from them. I finally heard back from my parents, but before that, I had already started paying off my loan installments EMI since I had a job. Even though I had seven months before the payments officially started, I decided to get a head start. It was my third EMI, and I knew it would be a long road before I'd even be halfway through paying off the debt. Despite that, I texted my father to ask about the status of their promised help. I didn't get an immediate response, but a few days later, my mother and Julie showed up at my condo. When they arrived, I invited them inside, but instead of coming in peacefully, my mother started yelling at me from the corridor. She called me shameless for what she described as blackmailing my parents for money after all they had done to raise me and provide me with a good education. Not wanting to create a scene in front of my neighbors, I urged them to come inside. Once they were in, Julie joined my mother in hurling insults and calling me all sorts of mean names. I couldn't hold back any longer and shouted at Julie, telling her she should be the one ashamed for wasting such a huge amount of money and that she should be responsible for paying it back. Julie, however, argued that she never asked our parents to give her the money they did so on their own, and now she didn't feel liable to repay it. Do you see any logic in that? Neither did I. My mother then resorted to emotional blackmail, reminding me that they had even mortgaged their house for my future. I lost my patience and told them that if that was the case, I'd stop paying the EMIs and let the bank auction the house to recover the loan amount. At that point, they realized I wasn't going to be swayed. They left, cursing me as they walked out. About a month later, I followed up with my father again, insisting that they needed to pay back the money. He replied, saying they were planning to partition the backside of the house to rent it out, and that the rental income would be used to pay the EMI for Julie's share of the loan. While I felt bad that our family home had to be split up to repay the loan, I knew Julie should feel even guiltier but she didn't. Instead, she continued to blame me for disrupting the peace in the household. I've stopped caring about her accusations. For now, I'm continuing to pay the EMIs. I spoke with the bank manager about the loan term, and he told me I still had three more years before the $140,000 would be fully paid off. So, I have four years to try and squeeze the money out of my parents' pockets. Hopefully, by then, they'll be able to come up with the money. I'll keep you updated if anything changes. Update 3. Hey everyone, I know some of you have been wondering where I went. It's been four years since I posted my story here, and a lot has changed during that time. I'm now a corporate lawyer living in United States. I'm engaged to my college sweetheart, who I mentioned in my previous post, and we're planning our wedding for next year. On top of that, I'm finally free from my student loan, I've paid it off completely. 
While I'm incredibly grateful for all I've accomplished, I can't help but feel sad about how strained my relationship with my parents has become. As I mentioned in my last update, my father agreed to rent out half of our house to cover Julie's loan payments. He did make a few payments, but everything changed when he found out I had landed a high-paying job at a big corporate company. Suddenly, he stopped paying the EMIs. At first, he had all kinds of excuses. He said the tenant wasn't paying rent, my mother's medical bills had increased, or that he was in debt because of his business. For the last one and a half years, he kept delaying the payments with one excuse after another. Since moving to United States, I hadn't visited home because I didn't feel comfortable there anymore. I believed his excuses for a while, but then I decided to call my aunt, who lives next door to my parents. What she told me was a shock. There was no truth to my father's excuses. In fact, my parents had built three more floors on top of their house and rented them out, making a good income. They were actually living quite comfortably, enjoying a lavish lifestyle. When I asked my aunt about Julie's career, she just laughed and said Julie was never serious about it she had always intended to live off my parents' money. This revelation left me confused and hurt. I asked my aunt if she was sure about all of this, and she assured me it was true. She even mentioned that my mother and Julie regularly flaunted their designer clothes and new jewelry at family gatherings. To prove it, she sent me pictures from a few events. I was heartbroken to realize that my parents were just using me for money. Angry and betrayed, I sent my father a final ultimatum. I told him that if they didn't start paying back the money, I would have no choice but to file a police complaint against them. By then, I was already in United States, and I warned him that I would default on the loan, which would result in them losing the house they had mortgaged. I also made it clear that I no longer needed any credit from the bank, so I wasn't afraid of the consequences. I decided that I didn't care about taking a hit on my credit score anymore, it just didn't matter to me. The same toxic cycle continued, where my parents and sister ganged up on me, verbally abusing me to the point where I almost considered just paying off the entire debt to get them off my back. Thankfully, my girlfriend stood by me through it all. She helped me stay strong and even got her sister involved, who happens to work with the police. Her sister called my parents and informed them that I was at the police station, ready to file a forgery complaint against them. Although it wasn't a criminal case, they suggested an out-of-court settlement. I felt bad about having to resort to such measures, but I knew it was necessary. My father eventually agreed to pay the money, but I made it clear that I didn't want to keep dealing with this mess over and over again. I insisted they pay the entire amount in one go. I knew they had the money my aunt had told me that just seven months earlier, my grandfather's house had been sold, and each of my father's siblings, including him, had received $300,000 as their share. After some hesitation and more threats of police involvement, my father finally agreed to pay the full amount. He transferred the money a week ago, and I immediately used it to pay off the remaining balance on my loan, closing it out for good. Along with the payment, my father sent me a note saying they were disowning me and cutting me off, telling me never to contact them again. That message broke me. I cried, feeling the sting of being disowned by my own family. My girlfriend tried to comfort me, reminding me that it wasn't my fault and that they were just greedy and selfish people. But no matter how terrible your family is, being disowned by your own blood is deeply painful. For a moment, I even blamed myself for the whole situation and thought about giving them the money back. But as my emotions settled, I realized that no matter what I did for them, they would never truly value or appreciate me. I had been paying the EMIs for four years, and they never once expressed gratitude or love. They never asked me politely for help. They always demanded it as if they were entitled to it. Meanwhile, they were showering their wealth on my sister, who had done nothing to deserve it, simply because she was their little girl. In the end, I understood that it wasn't my fault, and cutting ties with them might have been the best thing I could do for my own well-being. I still can't fully understand the logic behind the bias my parents had. I know some people might criticize me for threatening my parents and demanding the money, but I believe it was fair. I've moved past the guilt, and I no longer care about the labels others might put on me. I wanted to make this final update because there were a few people in the community who really helped me understand the complexities of the loan policy when I was too young and naive to figure it out on my own. So, thank you for listening to my story and for all the support. Now, let's get straight to the point.
I noticed that some comments on my original post were critical of my actions, saying that I shouldn't have gone after my family to get the money back. They felt it was my responsibility to help my sister and my family. About 20 to 25% of the comments shared that view. However, the majority, about 80%, supported my decision, agreeing that it wasn't my responsibility to cover the debt, especially since my sister didn't even use the money for education. I'd really like to hear your thoughts on this. Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section below, and let's discuss it together. This story has had its share of ups and downs, so I'm interested in what you all think. Once again, my name is Revenge Online. If you want to support the channel, there are three simple ways to do it. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment or like. I'll see you all tomorrow, and remember it's cool to be kind. See ya.